So the other day I looked at the use of load children to lazy load routes in an Angular application. And the lazy loading of routes is pretty great and it works pretty seamlessly once you get the compiling all working. And if you're on a fast network connection, it's pretty much not noticeable. So for example, if I'm on my you know cable connection here and I refresh, um, features A, B, and the aside are all lazy loaded. And you'll see that there's basically no noticeable delay between these network requests that happen down here and the rendering of the code on the page. But if you are on a slower connection or a mobile connection or a spotty connection, uh, there is definitely going to be a noticeable delay between when you initiate the navigation and when the remote configuration code can be merged into the active application. And in such a scenario, what I'd really like to do is provide some sort of feedback to the user that something is happening so they don't just sit there thinking that the application isn't responding. Um, and what I'd like to do is show some sort of a loading indicator. Now, as it turns out, the router will emit two events that are very helpful for exactly this purpose. And if we jump over into my app component here, the app component, you can see I'm injecting the router. And down here, we'll look at the events that we're subscribing to. And inside of the events, we can look for this route config load start and route config load end. This event gets emitted when the asynchronous module is encountered and Angular makes an HTTP request to get that remote code. And then, of course, the route config load end event is fired when the remote code has been pulled down and the route configuration has been merged into the active application. So essentially, we can use this start and end event to keep track of whether or not there's an active asynchronous request for router configuration. And what I'm doing here is I'm just keeping track of a count. Anytime it starts, I increment that count. And anytime it ends, I decrement that count, which means that this count now becomes uh, an indicator of whether or not remote configurations are being loaded. If it's positive, it means that there is currently a pending request. And if it's zero, it means that all pending re requests have completed. So we can then take this count, coerce it to a Boolean, and use that Boolean to determine whether or not we show an indicator for loading on the page. And if we look at the HTML for the app component, you can see that I'm taking that is showing route load indicator Boolean, and I'm using it to include this loading indicator. Now, if we jump over into the app here, and let's refresh the page so we flush all of our caches and we go into our network and we simulate a slow connection. Now if I jump to feature A, we get our loading module indicator. Then when the HTTP request for the remote code comes back after two seconds, indicator disappears and the code is merged into the active application. Same for feature B, you can see loading indicator shows, then is removed and again same for the aside, loads and shows. Now, of course, once all of that is loaded into the browser, uh, Angular doesn't have to go back to the remote server to get that code, so now we can go to all these remote features, and essentially it's a seamless uh, uh, navigation experience. Now, one thing that we need, one thing to take note of is that, again, let me go back to our normal connection and refresh, um, we're not changing anything on the code side, so if I go here and I load that code remotely, you can see that there's no indicator that showed. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is that we're actually always showing the indicator, but we're not fading it into view until a certain time has passed. And what that time threshold allows is for fast connections to never have to see the loading indicator and for slow connections to be able to see it. And for the sake of simplicity, what I've done is I've moved that delay into the CSS of this router load indicator. And if we jump into the CSS for the app component here, um, here's all the styling for the, the load indicator, the background yellow, uh, text black, so on and so forth, you know, fixed to the top of the page. Um, but what you can see here is that I'm applying an animation, router load indicator animation, and I'm giving it a delay of 100 milliseconds, which means that nothing will, the animation won't leave the first keyframe until after 100 milliseconds have passed. And if the average load time on a fast network connection is less than 100 milliseconds, then essentially that means that the route, uh, the route animation here will never leave the first keyframe uh, for those particular users.
And if we look at what this animation is doing, we can see that it's starting out with an opacity of zero, and then it's fading the indicator into view using an opacity of one. So again, what that means is that for the first 100 milliseconds of this element's existence in the DOM, it's going to take on that opacity zero because I'm using fill mode of both. And then only after 100 milliseconds will it initiate a 200 millisecond delay or a 200 millisecond duration, at which point it animates from opacity zero to opacity one. So what that allows us to do is have a fast connection, essentially not see things that are less than 100 milliseconds, right? We're vastly faster than 100 milliseconds. Uh, but again, if I refresh here and I simulate my slow connection, now that we're less likely to see sub 100 millisecond load times, we're gonna get that loading indicator, that animation kicks in after that 100 millisecond delay, fades the indicator in using opacity. So anyway, even though I don't understand necessarily how Angular loads the code remotely or how it even knows where to load the code, some sort of interplay between, I don't know, the, the Webpack tools and Angular's ng tools plugin, uh, what I can do is provide a better experience around that asynchronous loading by showing an indication for users that are on a slow connection and who aren't just sitting there thinking that the application isn't responding to their navigation requests.